All right, this is our next episode of True Wrestling Fans Discussions, continuing our pay-per-view review series. This is going to go back to WCW. This is going to be Super Brawl 1. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. And let's get into this with the coffee and Red Bull. Now, this the, the inaugural one was in May, or May 19, 1991, but going forward after this, they would do it in February. Right. Another pay-per-view with a brawl in it. Just felt redundant. This to me, I thought back then this was kind. Of, I thought I thought this was kind of like their WrestleMania because on the Super Bowls they used the Roman numerals when yeah, they was, did it. Yeah, it was supposed to be like you know their Super Bowl, you know, Super Brawl, Super Bowl. Yeah, not quite. Yeah, but, it wasn't. Yeah. In any event, you had Jim Ross and Dusty Rhodes doing the commentary. You also had Tony Schiavone and Missy Hyatt in in the backstage thing doing whatever it is they're doing. Uh, roughly 6,000 fans on hand in St. Petersburg, Florida. This was qu- uh, quoted as the return from the rising sun. And this was uh, pretty much a revenge match from the main event, uh, deeming back for a few months ago when they went to Tokyo between Ric Flair and Tatsumi Fujiyami. Right. And Flair had lost. And then they changed it. It was for the world title and for the NWA title. This was supposed but, to be for both, but then it just became for Flair's title. Right. But initially, Flair had lost it, but they never gave him the belt. Because they said that it's the NWA belt, but then Fujinami was recognized as the world champion, but not the NWA champion. And then they turned around and said that he threw a flare over the rope, so then that didn't count. So does the rematch. Sounds very, like WCW. Very convoluted, yeah. Exactly. And, then, and then he comes out as the uh, IWGP champion, which is obviously New Japan, so he right. wasn't right. They didn't say NWA, but this was supposed to be for both titles, but it was only yeah. for one. So our opening match of the night was the... For the United States tag team titles, the titles were vacant, she go figure. Re- reason why is because the Steiner brothers have recently become the, the WCW world tag team champions, right, right. so they dropped the U.S. titles. So the match was between the Young Pistols and the Fabulous Freebirds. Yeah. Young Pistols, the Smoking Guns, before the Smoking Guns. Yep. And all they and did was feud with the Freebirds. That was it. Was like 100 matches. In here. Oh, yeah, always. And then they turned them bad and nobody cared. Yeah. But, I mean, the fans were actually into this, but then again, they're down south, so obviously they will be because Bad the Freebirds Street. are very well-known. Bad, Bad Street, Street, yeah. Yep. Young Pistols are known down there. Yeah. Um, the match itself wasn't bad. It's funny how the Freebirds came down with DDP. Good God. Yeah, DDP cuts off, like, the, the announcer. Yeah, and then um, Daddy uh, Big Daddy Dink, which is Oliver Humperdinck. Oliver Humperdinck, yeah. But he looked yeah, at as a little as a biker or whatever – Bouncer, he's trying to portray. Yeah, they that. Were, I, don't, I don't know what they would do. I don't know, Big yeah. Daddy Dink. But uh, does he leave? Does he go backstage, or is he still out there? Because I feel like he disappears in the match. I never really. I didn't even uh, see him. Yeah. I think he, he was out there briefly. Right, right. I don't know. I was also um, falling asleep too, to be fair. So yeah, the, the, um, the, there were there were twelve matches on this card. Five or six of them didn't belong on here. The last three definitely the last three belonged were great, on here. Yeah. They were awesome. Yeah. Um. And we have one stretcher match that wasn't even the, the, wasn't even a stretcher right. match. Right. Um, but yeah, I have to agree with you on that one. Now the Freebirds do win the tag titles because the referee uh, went down. Obviously, all of a sudden here comes this person. I guess it was called Fantasia. Fantasia. He he. They changed the name because I think they were scared that we get sued by Disney. So they changed the name to Bad Street, I think. But it was Brad yeah. Armstrong. For those that don't yeah. know, it was Brad. It was Brad Armstrong. Come and, come and dress as, like, a, a bird or something, like. Gobbledygooker, almost. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he helped, Fantasia helps the Freebirds. They become the United States Tag Team Champions. Young Pistols get screwed over yet again. In any event. Our next match was Ricky Morton versus Dangerous Dan Spivey. And this is Morton now trying to be a ta- uh, singles wrestler now because Robert Gibson had major knee surgery. He was out for a while. And so Ricky they had, the, uh, had to go into the singles. Uh, was this before or after the Tony Schiavone Z-Man interview that I was just like, what's the point of this? Was it Tony that, was, that was after this match. Was after the, oh, okay. All right. well, oh, yeah. You know, when, when, uh, they had, when they interviewed Z-Man uh, yeah. on his injury and yeah. Missy yeah. Hyatt's yeah. drooling yeah. over there. It's like, who the hell cares? What is this? Yeah. So anyway. And then on. they're talking about her doing another backstage interview, which again, who cares? Uh, uh, she, she, you know, she's all like, oh, where's Z-Man in the shower? Like, whatever. This match was literally three minutes of Dan Spivey beating the crap out of Ricky Morton. Yeah. He power bombs him, uses his boot for the pin. Poor Ricky one, two, Morton, three. man. Poor Ricky Morton. Well, 
I mean, this is the old man version of Marty Jannetty, in a way. He's not a singles wrestler, unfortunately. And and with his partner of the Rock and Roll Express being out, it's either he does this or he has to sit out a year. Yeah. And wait for Gibson to come back. And that's just that's not something Morton. And then and they did the one thing no organization has ever done, and that's turn uh the rock and roll express against each other and one of them heal eventually, yeah. which was the dumbest thing I ever seen. After this, yeah, they they interviewed uh, Z Man, which uh, you know, he's coming back from his injury. Okay, good for you. Bye. Our next match was another. Why are we watching this? Tommy Rich, Wildfire, Tommy Rich, 1980s World Heavyweight Champion against Nikita Koloff. Now, I like Nikita Koloff. That was one big dude that could kick your ass. I, I really like, and I love the, the Sting Koloff dudes that they had. When they turned him fan favorite, it, it took me a while to kind of like be okay with that because I always you know, saw him as the heel and, and stuff. And this was another squash match. Four and a half minutes. The Koloff hits him with the clothesline or the Russian sickle, as they called it. And he pins Tommy Rich and Koloff's the, the winner. And this is not the last time we're going to see Koloff for the night. Who was the one that came out with the Bears? It's later on in the card, right? The guy that was Big you. Josh. Doink. Yeah. That was, that was Doink. Matt, the, Matt Bourne. And the Bear starts Matt pissing. Bourne, yeah, the Bear starts pissing at the end of the match. One of the Bears. Welcome Circus, to WCW. Circus. And yet you don't want to do an ECW pay-per-view. Jesus Christ. My God. We got bears here, man. I'm surprised Bischoff or Jim Hurt or, or whoever was running this thing at the time didn't have him in a tag match. Come on. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Um, <laughs> following the Koloff match, uh, Tony Cervani interviewed Johnny B. Bad with Teddy yep. Long. This was the this was his debut, introduction right? of him. Yeah. Johnny Little B. Richard. Was kind of bad. <laughs> Too much makeup on the face, no, looks, really. This yeah, was yeah. really bad. That was I, Dusty's I, idea, too. Dusty said, oh, doesn't he look like Little Richard? And then they're like, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's what I always thought watching him. But it never made sense to have Johnny be bad, no pun intended, be bad. It didn't make yeah, he, he was, was better a, as a he fan was a heel. Yeah, he was better as a fan. I like Johnny. He was bad. flamboyant. This was, yeah. this was early was Johnny. This was his debut. Was, I thought it was terrible. He said something really weird, too. He said something like, I'm so pretty that I should have been born a little girl. I'm like, it's kind of creepy, man. Yeah, he started pulling off some gold dust vibes there for a minute. Uh, I, I, I'm like, dude, this is your first promo, and you're killing yourself with this. Yeah. And the fans didn't care either. Well, they didn't even know him. Yeah. That was the problem. Well, that and they just watched two matches that mm -hmm. they wanted to get, you know, they're demanding their money back. So, in any event, our next match after this I actually enjoyed because it was uh, the undefeated Dustin Rhodes with the uh, biased ring announcer there, Dusty. Versus Terry Taylor of the York Foundation yeah, with yeah. with uh, Alexander York or Marlena in the future. And, of course, Mr. Hughes. This guy pops up everywhere. Terry Ronalds, right? Yeah. That's his wife. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming the they, time, were, yeah. I guess, yeah, they were married. I, I, I think yeah, they were married. Dating, or, time, yeah. yeah, at least dating. Something, something yeah. Time. So I liked it better as Marlena. Yeah. But, um, I mean, this match This match was pretty good. This, you know, this is WCW saying, okay, we're not going to turn you into the Red Rooster. We're just going to have a computer, you know, gimmick with you. And Dustin Rhodes at this point is still undefeated. Yeah. And he gets the victory. Um, Hughes actually he hit uh, Taylor accidentally in this match mm -hmm. where Rhodes was able to get the pin on this. You know, he, all, he just puts a little glove on and all of a sudden he's, we're supposed to believe there's like 50 pounds of lead in it or something. But, you know, this match was actually pretty good. The fans were into it. Dusty's practically jumping up and down over there. Obviously, that's his boy. So Dustin gets the victory, and this will be uh, one of many for him. Unfortunately, never got a title match, and I don't understand why. And I don't think, I, honestly, I don't, in past interviews, well, I don't think anybody's ever asked Bischoff uh, why he didn't, or even asked uh, Dustin for that matter. Because uh, I was always too curious how come he never got at least one, even on a Clash of Champions. I don't know. Even the title shot. I don't understand yeah. why. In any event, the the next match that you were referring to with the Bears, it was Big Josh yeah. versus Black Bart subbing for Larry Zabisco, who was still injured. I would have rather an injured Zabisco come out. <laughs> and, and 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 Doink over here, Matt Osborne eventually. Doink the Clown comes out with his Bears. The best Doink. He was the best Doink. Best Doink, yes. He was. I like the heel Doink. Mm -hmm. 
It was dark. It was creepy. When they made a fan favorite, I'm like, get him out of here. But yeah, yeah. this was another squash match. Big Josh beats Black Bart with an earthquake, earthquake like splash yeah. to get the pin. And of course, we got the Bears and oh the my Bears God. something. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy. The guy came up with two bears, man. Like, I'm surprised they I were allowed they, to do that. Yeah, this I isn't know. the first time they did it either. They, they, uh, Big Josh, uh, Big Josh had wrestled on another event where they brought he brought them out as well. But whatever, it is what it is. Now, before I get to the next match and, and literally uh, fall asleep, the next interview was actually Paulie Dangerously on the Danger Zone. Too many with, interviews. Yes, it was. Too many. And this interviews. one, you know. Dangerously, he's trying to act all Texan and stuff, and comes out the, pulls hat, the, yeah, the cur- with with he pulls this with the wrong person with yeah. Stan Hansen, and Stan's just going off on him and whatnot. And Stan Hansen actually issued the challenge to Dustin Rhodes mm-hmm. during this. So yeah, there were too many interviews. There's one more coming up too, yeah. in between matches. Our next match, oh my god, I think they spent more on the pyro and everything else they did. Than, than paying attention to the actual match. And I can't believe they did this gimmick. And when I talk about it, I'm talking about Oz. It was bad. Dragged but, on. You had the Wizard of Oz characters. Turner owned uh, the rights to the Wizard of, Wizard of Oz. That's why they were able they, to do it. Yeah. If you just would have named this guy Kevin Nash, we're good. Yeah. Came out the monkey. You know, the monkey died after this. I don't know if the monkey, like, got I'm injured sure, yeah, during... Maybe. Yeah, I don't know if the monkey got injured during the pay per view or what happened. Tony Schiavone got mentions it. Monkeys, we got bears. But the monkey died. Yeah, they're trying to be WWE at this point because we got parrots, we got snakes, we got Harlem street rats, but here we got bears and dying monkeys. Didn't they keep saying "Welcome to Oz" or something like that. Yes, "Welcome to Oz." Welcome to Oz. Yeah, nobody cared. The crowd was like silent. Like the they was were looking around too. like, "Who the hell is he?" I think they might have booed too in the initially. They I don't did. Know. It's bad. Could have sworn I heard a boring chant, too. But, I mean, it was. The whole gimmick was crap. Stupid. Stupid. Everything they did with Kevin Nash in the beginning was garbage. No wonder he got he asked for his release and they gave it to him. And then the right guy made him, which was the Vince McMahon. If you just would have named this guy Kevin Nash as far as uh, a big seven-foot guy, a powerhouse that could go toe-to-toe mm-hmm. with guys like Vader or Ron Simmons or Sid Vicious, then you've got a main eventer that, that for a long time. But yeah, you're... You get a Master Blaster, Oz, and a, and Vinny Vegas. Yeah. Vinny Vegas was the best of the worst. It was. Yeah. I got to agree. Because it was actually Nash act, kind of acting like himself yeah. doing the Vinny Vegas gimmick. Yeah. But, I mean, this was literally a 26-second match against was Tim Parker. Let's see you. Yeah, goodbye. Uh, I I just – I he picked him up and kind of like an airplane spins. Um, whatever. I'm not even – It's, it's we're, we're done. This was a bad gimmick for him. Our fourth interview after this was Missy Hyatt in the locker room looking for yeah. Z-Man in the shower, which is ridiculous. And she finds Stan Hansen again. Well, before that, she was talking to Terry Taylor. Yeah, and he's like, I could care less if he's in yeah. there or not and whatnot. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more interview after that, too. Yeah, there is. Well, um, Diamond Stud, which I thought was pretty cool bringing mm-hmm. him out. In any event, the next match was a taped fist match, but the uh, flying Brian Pillman mm-hmm. against Barry Windham. This was actually a good, decent match between the two. And, you know, it was a six minute match. They had to get these moving along because, you know, you got the you got three title matches still to come, plus a cage match. And so Superplex from, from the top rope was the pin for Barry Windham over, over Flying Brian. Uh, and, and that's it. Barry Windham gets the victory. Now, our next match, uh, following that, was Diamond Dallas Page interview. Uh, now, I noticed they mentioned uh, it was supposed to be the Diamond Exchange, but he says Diamond Mine. And I'm like, huh, NXT in the future. Because mm-hmm. they had, I don't even know if they still have it anymore, because I barely watch NXT. I did, I did watch last night's event, but the, I don't even know if the Diamond Mine still exists. But um, he had the newest member of the Diamond Exchange. Good God. The Diamond Stud, Scott Hall. Yes. Scott Hall was huge, too. Yes. And again, yeah. if you just use him as Scott Hall, I mean, we don't know from watching the live back then, we can't see the future that these guys are going to be icons of the business. Right. Yeah. You don't yeah. see it. But you look, I see this guy uh, uh, as tall as these two guys are, Hall and Nash, and you're giving him stupid gimmicks. Meanwhile, honestly, I saw a main event there in both of them. 
that you you put the right gimmick on them, not something stupid, mm-hmm. and you've got something made here for Chad. Because the one thing really they're lacking, with the exception of Flair, Luger, and Sting at the time, is main eventers. Mm-hmm. That that's what they were lacking. I mean, Ron Simmons is on his way up, but for the most part, from '91 to '93, you were lacking main eventers. Yeah. And that's what they needed for the championship belt. I mean, hell, you don't have that, and the guys like Barbarian get a title shot. So now the next match didn't make any sense. Now it was a stretcher match. They said in order for, in order to uh, win, your opponent has to be put on a stretcher. Correct? I, I did hear that right because I had to go back a few times. Reason why I'm saying this is because when El Gigante beat Sid Vicious, he never went on a stretcher. I think he just gets up and leaves too. I think he's not even. Yeah, because this was Sid's farewell. This was it for him. He was done, and you could tell it was a squ- it was a two minute squash match. They just couldn't work two. together either, though. Those two guys are too big. They just didn't. They, the styles didn't mesh. Now, now, anytime we've ever watched a stretcher match, I mean, according to WCW rules, you had to be put on a stretcher and gone over a certain line. El Gigante used his iron claw to get the pin on Vicious. And then following that, Kevin Sullivan and the one-man gang come down, and they're, they're beating up El Gigante, and you don't even right. see Sid anymore. There, there's nothing so involved in a stretcher. Yeah. Now, in the beginning, El, you see El Gigante brings the stretcher down with him. But then after that, they're putting El Gigante on the stretcher, and then he gets back up. Nothing had nothing to do with a stretcher in this match. So it's just confusing to me. Like, okay, your stipulation didn't even happen here. But again, Sid is one foot out the door at this point because a couple of months later, we're, you know, a month and a half later, we're going to see him in WWE. So I just I think the, the execution on this was way off, especially when you have a stipulation on a match that didn't even exist. Mm-hmm. Now, our next match I, I thought was pretty cool. There's a steel cage match with Teddy Long in that shark cage above the ring. It was Ron Simmons versus his former tag team partner yeah. with the natural Butch Reed. No, he wasn't. Nice he, he wasn't. He was Hacksaw. Hacksaw Butch, Butch Reed. Reed. And I, I like these two. Uh, t- I like them as a tag team. I've said this before. I thought they were underrated tag team. When they feuded together, I thought it was even good, too, because mm-hmm. they brought out the best in each other. And this is now Ron Simmons moving on to singles competition, and we know where that's going to lead to. But um, I, um, the, the cage in this thing was, was like half put together. It just it looked like crap. Um. Teddy Long is suspended above the ring. He throws a chain down that Hacksaw doesn't even get to use. Yeah. Well, I mean, he does, but it, does, it doesn't even matter because Simmons pin, uh, well, pin, I don't even, honestly, I don't even remember. <laughs> that's that's a just, the again, the poor execution on this match. It wasn't match. a good match. Yeah, it wasn't a good match. No, it could have been better. Simmons wins with the spine buster. I love how they both come out to the same entrance music, you know, Doom's music. Doom versus Doom. Yeah, this was the uh, what they call it, the Doomsday Cage, or the Dooms Cage, or so, something, something to that effect. They use the name of the tag team in, involved in the match, and so. But Simmons gets the victory, and we know, like I said, we know where he's going to be elevated to eventually. Which mm-hmm. I even think, and I've said this in WWE, I don't think they should have gone with a Farouk gimmick. I think they should have just gone with Ron Simmons, regardless if you're going to do Nation or whatnot. And I think he should have been a main eventer there too. That's just my opinion. Now, our next three matches, oh, my God, they tore the house down. They actually kept the the fans from leaving. The WCW tag titles on the line, the Steiner brothers versus Sting and Lex Luger. Yeah, they showed a video four, package. Four friends here. A uh, lot of respect with all of them in this match. And this was actually a pretty good match. It mm-hmm. went back and forth, back and forth, knocked down, drag out. Baby faces versus baby yep. faces. Um, what's funny is... Uh, Toward, at the end of the towards the end of the match, I uh, Nikita Koloff comes out. Yeah. Uh, Sting sees him. He's heading for Lex Luger, but Sting pulls him out of the way. Sting gets hit with the Russian sickle, busts him open because apparently he has the chain in his hand, and uh, that's where the Steiners got the pin. And Sting, of course, is irate. He's busted open. He's looking for Koloff. Uh, they fight in the back. And he finally finds him. The Steiner brothers keep the tag team titles, but. I mean, overall, this match was was pretty good. It was yeah. a little short for my. I just story. didn't like the. I just didn't like the ending. The the match With was Cole great. Yeah, I didn't. But I mean, I guess they were in a bad spot. Like they can't really let. 
They're starting all to four go guys have huge, right? huge momentum. They're all, yeah, they're all. You got Luger, that's the United faces. States champion. Yeah. You got Sting, who's Sting, and then the Steiners. They're all yeah. on a huge momentum. I always like Sting and um and Luger together. They were a great tag team. They were they were friends in real life too, and you could tell. There was another Super yeah. Brawl uh, where they got the tag title match uh, against the Road Warriors, and that was where Luger was kind of turning heel, but he was still with Sting. Yeah. And it's funny because the next Super Brawl that we'll be doing, the main event, is Sting and Luger. Yep. So they always worked good together mm-hmm. and against each other. Right. They always had uh, the good chemistry there. The next match after this was for the television championship. It was Arn Anderson defending the title against beautiful Bobby Eaton, going after his first major uh, singles title. Mm-hmm. He got all the tag belts with the Midnight Express. Now he was in the pursuit for beautiful his Bobby. First- and this match was another great one. Mm-hmm. The two of them brought the best out of each other. Arn Anderson was always a good uh, ring technician. Yeah, of course. He, you know, he loved working, especially loved working with the younger guys to develop them. We've we've commented on what he he did with the Rockers when he was in mm-hmm. WWE. Um, he hit the Alabama Jam for the pin on this one, and um, got the victory over Arn Anderson to get the television title. And this is his first title, so. Congratulations to Bobby Eaton on this one. Now our main event was like, and we said this already, was supposed to be for both titles, right. the WCW title and the NWA title. Unfortunately, it was only for the WCW title. Ric Flair defending it against Tatsumi Fujiyami. And they also had two referees in this one. We have Bill Alfonso, famous ECW guy, on the outside as the backup ref. But they didn't I mean, announce. They didn't even announce that it was for the um. What was the belt that for Japan? The uh. The IWGP. Because I think it was. I think they don't announce. I think they don't announce. They, it, they announce the it as, as the champion. Right, 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 right. But they don't. Uh, again, like I said, it was supposed to be for both titles, yeah. but it was only for the one. But they did mention that he was IWGP. They champion. did mention it. Yeah, I think even the commentator says that it was for. It was for. I think they might have said it was for both of them, but the but when the announcer didn't, I think. Somebody mentions it during the commentary or something. I don't know. Yeah, they botched it up. Because, again, it was supposed to be for it, but it wasn't. Yeah. And you have um, Tiger Hattori is actually going to be the referee inside the ring. Mm -hmm. So this way they don't mess this up at all. And this was a great match between the two. Yeah, it was. Again, this was a a return match from a few months ago when they went to Tokyo and Flair fought Fujiyami. And... um, What's funny botches, is, he botches one thing though. I think on the, he botches something on the ropes. I think when Flair yes. is on the ropes, he goes to like jump and punch him or something. I think he just completely botches it. Then he yeah, does it again. Yeah, yeah there, there was a couple of uh, ill time to move here. I mean, it was a good match. Mm-hmm. And technically, we're going to have where the referee gets hit, you know, naturally. Right. You know, Flair kick, kicked and actually hit the ref. And then he rolls up to Tatsumi, and Afonso actually counts the pin for this. Instead of Hattori. And of course, now you got Hattori saying, no, 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 I'm the referee. Alfonso's already mm-hmm. raised Flair's hand. So Flair has successfully defended the title against him. So we've got another mess up here between them. And obviously, they're not going to do this a third time because this this was it at this point. Right. But, well, Flair, I mean, Flair, this is, I think this is Flair's last pay per view, I think. Well, before, yeah. before he leaves. I, I yeah, because he, does, he doesn't lose the title before he goes. Yeah. So. So, yeah, so Flair and Sid are pretty much on their way out after this, which I'm surprised WCW was able to hold on because two of your biggest guys are out. Yeah. But, you know, you had Sting, you had Luger. Eventually, you have Bulldog. I mean, you had Cactus. So, I mean, you had the Vader. Guys, yeah. Ron Simmons, Vader. So, so I mean, yeah, yeah this, this pay-per-view, it was okay. It was just I, the last three matches were very, very good, but the rest of the card is just weak to me. Like I've said on every most every other WCW pay per view, some of these matches did not belong on mm-hmm. it. And if you you have three, you you you've, you've you've shown off three three debuts of people: Oz, Diamond Stud, and Johnny B. Bad, and nobody even cared. Yeah. And the Oz gimmick was just crap from from the yeah. word go, unfortunately. Yeah. So, all right, that's our review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. See you guys soon. Take care.